Hey, Pastor Ben Miller here again from Bumpville Bible Church. I am here in my garden. Today I want to talk about uh, one of Jesus' parables, but uh, before I do that, I would just like to remind everybody if you could just um, uh, subscribe, uh, hit the like button, and share this video, um, or check us out on our Facebook page, um, and follow us there. That way you can get all the latest updates on what is going on at Bumpville, and uh, help us get the... Uh, message of the gospel out to others. Um, so what I want to talk about today in the garden, so Jesus is going to talk about a seed, right? and I got here a corn seed. Jesus is actually going to refer to wheat seed, but the same principle that happens to wheat that he's talking about is what happens to a corn seed, and that is when you put it in the ground, it dies, right? it seeks to exist. So I got this seed that is doing nothing, and as you'll see, I got some corn, hopefully you can see it there, that is just starting to come up. Right, it's just starting to poke its head up. And so what I we want to look at today, what that is, and of course I got my Bible today, and I'm going to read from John chapter 12 here today, what Jesus has to say. So just to give us a little bit of a background, I'm going to start in verse 20. It says, Now those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Phyllis, Philip went and told Andrew, and Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. So basically what we have, we got some Greeks or non-Jews. They're at the feast with the Jews, worshiping God, and they want to see Jesus. And so his disciples take these Greeks to Jesus, and this is what we're about to read, is Jesus' answer to them. He says, Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there, there, will, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. And so... What we have here, right, is Jesus making some very interesting points, right? So his point is, right, a seed, any seed, right, it has to go in the ground and it has to die to bear fruit, right? My corn seed, I have to put it into the ground, it has to die, and then when it dies, what comes forward? A beautiful corn plant. In fact, once my corn plant grows to full maturity, right, and I harvest the, um, the ear of corn off of it, you will not be able to find the seed. All the remnants of the seed will be gone, right? And so I plant the seed and then it takes on purpose. It grows, it serves, and of course, eat, I eat the food um, from the ear, or even uh, if you were into doing things this way, you would save it and plant that next year and get maybe a hundred more plants or more, right? And so Jesus is saying, if you want to be a fruitful life and serve God, you, like that seed, have to die. You have to die to yourself, your own desires, your own self-will. So in a way in which this looks, right, because Jesus says, hey, hey, if, if you die, this what this looks like is you follow me. You go where I would go. You're where I would be, okay? And that's how you get eternal life. So example would be uh, Eric Little. He was a gold medalist Olympian, a runner, and he left all that fame and fortune in England to go be a missionary in China where he would ultimately die in a Japanese um, concentration camp during World War II in which he actually had an opportunity to go back home near the end of the war, but he chose to stay and make sure that a pregnant woman went back, in home, back to his home in his place, which really is, I think, pretty incredible. And that just shows someone who gave up his own wills, his own desires in this life for Christ. And see, we've done a horrible thing, I, I really believe, in the church in the United States today, in that we have divorced belief from death, right? In that we say, hey, all you have to do to be saved, all you have to do to have eternal life is simply believe that Jesus came and died for your sins. Now, that's true, right? But the problem is, it's more than that, because if you truly believe that Jesus died for your sins, you will follow him, 
what we end up giving people is the same belief that the demons have in Satan, right? The demons believe Jesus died on the cross. They believed he died for sins, and they tremble about it. But they're not saved because they will not follow and obey him. And see, that's the thing. Well, are you willing to give your life up to Christ? Now, none of us is going to do this perfectly. But are you willing to give your life up for Christ? Are you willing to, instead of your spare time playing video games, take that time and serve Christ in your church, witness to others, build other people up in the faith, minister to the homeless or the hungry? Are you willing to do that instead of playing video games all day with your free time? Are you willing to give up your addiction to alcohol or drugs or gambling or pornography to follow Christ and do what he has for you to do? You see, that's the thing, and we don't stress that that's what Jesus calls us to do. Jesus says, those who follow me receive eternal life. Are we willing to give our finances over to him and live with less, be out of debt, be financially responsible, and then give to the success of the kingdom of heaven? Make sure we're tithing to our church. Make sure we're helping other local ministries like the Pringsy Care Centers and other things. Are we willing to truly follow Jesus and give up our own desires? So that's what I want you to leave you with and ponder. Have you really died to yourself? Have you put what you want aside, right? You're not, God, Jesus doesn't call you to love yourself. Jesus calls you to love him. And so are you doing that? I'm Pastor Ben Miller from Bumfield Bible Church. Till next time, may God's grace shine upon you.